Psalms 108. A song or psalm tells us what a psalm is of David. O oh God. And this is an old God praising the Lord. There's an old God, I'm in trouble. My heart is fixed. Now, the, the meaning is, fixed means it's it's nailed, it, it's screwed, it's there, unmovable. And yet, also, I was thinking, wouldn't it be great, too, because our heart, before we're saved, where Jesus said, out of the heart comes adultery, fornication, murder, theft. And wouldn't it be great that, God, my heart has been fixed through the blood of Jesus Christ? That I had a wicked heart and God has fixed it, God has healed it. I'm fixed upon the Lord and I've been healed by the Lord. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Awake, sultry and heart. I myself will awake early. David says, I'm going to get up early in the morning to serve the Lord. And I'm going to wake up the musical instrument. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises among the heathen or the nations. I said the people is Israel. I said the heathen because nations, that's the Gentiles. So you know what David said? Before my people, the people, before the heathen, the nations, I'm going to sing about God. I'm going to lift up God. I'm going to praise God. I don't care what they say. And I don't care what they do. Me? I'm going to sing about God before. If they don't like it, they can leave my company. For thy mercy, this is why I'm going to sing, David said. For thy mercy is great above the heavens. Three heavens. The mercy of God comes from the heaven, God's throne. The Bible says, let us approach unto the throne of grace. Thy truth reaches unto the clouds. That's high. We can't reach to the clouds. And we got airplanes and helicopters. David, you know what he's saying? The truth is I can't reach it. There's so much truth that we are walking in truth all around us. Today, we're walking in the midst of a world of lies and deceive and false. And they try to say evolution, and nature says God. The world tries to say tobacco and alcohol, and the God says love, joy, peace, long suffering, patience. The world tries to say religion, and God says my beloved Son, Jesus Christ. The world says water. God says my blood. For every truth of God, there's a lie of the devil in the world. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heaven. As far as your mercy is above the heaven, so we ought to exalt God. And not man. I read today that this is the date that the, the Lincoln Memorial, that Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln sitting in that seat in Washington, D.C. was dedicated. We're a Christian nation. Doesn't the Bible say you're not to make an image of man or woman or, or, or any of the beasts? Are we not supposed to not worship those images? Well, we don't worship those images. I can get you pictures of pictures of people taking pictures of Abraham Lincoln's monument. And I can show you people who go, ooh, ah. And how many people go visit Washington, D.C. for a week 
and skip out on church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and midweek service. I know, I know Christians going to Washington, D.C. to see what Washington, D.C. And they come back, what church did you go to? Well, we didn't go to church. Man, everywhere I went on a vacation, we went looking for a church on Sunday. So we're the exalt God, not man. Ooh, he hit a ball out in the outfield. Ooh. He took the ball from somebody and ran to an end zone. Jesus. He drove 400 times in a circle. He, remembered, he, he, he memorized the lines for a movie. How much scripture does he know? God is the almighty God. I got my politician. Does that politician represent and, and uphold the almighty God and Jesus Christ his son? In his public life and his private life. Not to say I'm a Christian so he can get your foolish vote. Is his name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? Is God exalted? And thy glory above all the earth. That's what Moses asked to see God. God, I want to see your glory. God says, no one can see my glory, at least you die. What is the glory of God? He's light. He's love. He's long-suffering. He's patient. He's peace. He is all that man is not. And then some. He's eternal. He's all-knowing. He is completely sinless. He'll never sin. He'll never lie. And when we get the glory and get the new, we're going to see a light. For God's a spirit. We that worship must worship in the spirit. There is nothing like the glory of God that we can match on this earth. Somebody goes, well, show me God. I can't. There's nothing. The Bible says there's nothing here. You got to come to Jesus to see the glory of God. I've seen the glory of God. I've seen in Jesus Christ, I've seen the fact is that God's glory has taken away my sin. I am clean. These things I've written, I may, know, I may know that I have eternal life. That's God's glory. And you're not going to see God's glory if you reject Jesus Christ. That thy beloved. Now David's talking about himself. But what did God say? This is Jesus, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased, may be delivered. And what's that? Well, Jesus Christ suffered and died. And he was delivered from death by God raised him the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, from, from verses 6 to 13, we read... Thereabouts of Psalm 60, it's a repeat. It's very important. Psalms 108, 6 to 13, and Psalm 60 is repeated twice, and you don't even get the birthday of Jesus repeated twice. You don't even get, I don't know how many wise men repeated. There's something about Psalms 108, verse 6 to 13, and Psalm 60 that needs to be studied more than happy birthday, Jesus, because God repeated it. It's a verily, verily. You know how often God repeats that tabernacle? God said, I want you to get this. There's so many, by so many cubits, by so many cubits. God tells Moses. Moses comes out on the most. Okay, we need this material, and this has to be so many cubits, by so many cubits. Like, God, didn't we do that? And they're building a tabernacle. Yeah, and then, you know, we need this material, and it needs to be so many cubits. But God, we just did that. 
All right, now we're going to anoint the tabernacle. And the tabernacle is so many cubits by. That's important. Well, I got my little Tony. My li That's not important. Little, li that's not important. Well, who's going to be the content? That's not important. Do you know how often creation and creators mentioned in the Bible? That's important. Do you know how often the blood of Jesus, the blood of God is mentioned for our salvation? That's important. The birthday of Jesus. That's not important. Though he was born. There is more said about Virgin Mary and a, and a virgin shall, shall conceive seed and bear forth a son than there is the actual birthday of Jesus. The miracle of a virgin conceiving without a man, and that was that's important. The birthday of Jesus, we're not even told. The death of Jesus, Abed 14 at 6 p.m. That's in Exodus, that's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then Paul speaks about the Passover, which is the death of Jesus. That's important. Verily, verily. How did Jesus get you important? Did he pass out Snickers and, and, and Tootsie Rolls? He said, verily, verily. Nicodemus, I got something important to say to you. What is it? Verily, verily, I say it to you, except the man be born. That's important. Verily, verily. Peter, do you love me? You know, you know I love you, Lord. Peter, do you know do you love me? I, I just said it, Lord. Yeah, I love you. Peter, do you... What's going on here, Lord? I'm saying something very important, Peter. Disciples, did you get the idea I fed 5,000 with bread and fish? No. I got to do it again with 4,000. He did the 5,000 because they didn't get it. He did the 4,000 twice. Important. This, I don't know all of Psalm 108 and all of Psalm 60, but it's important. God mentioned it twice. There are Psalms that already are found when David's living in, in Samuel. It's important. David's military men are important. It's mentioned twice. There are men that follow, you know, well, there you go, Sally, Memorial Day, and, you know, honoring troops. Those troops were alive, and they honored God. Look at Uriah. Well, I want you to go home and sleep with your wife. But the ark is here, and Joab is there. You want me to go home and sleep with my wife? I'd rather serve God first, then the army. Thy beloved may be delivered, saved with thy right hand. Who is at the right hand of God? Jesus Christ. Who does the saving? Jesus. How's that? Beloved Jesus, right hand Jesus, save Jesus, Jehovah saves. You got to put the magazine down. You got to put those Christian books down and open up the King James Bible. And answer me. Whoa, David. God has spoken in his holiness. Christians don't even believe that. You got a Bible? Yes. Do you read it? No. Well, what did God give us the Bible for? Dust collecting. Yeah. God has spoken His holiness. Let, let, let's let, let's try this one out. Ready? Let's try it out. The Holy Bible. Psalms 108, verse 7. Where did the Holy Bible get its name? And do you read it? Why not? I will, God will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will divide. This is God speaking. We all get together in unity. 
Ecumenical. God says, I will divide Shechem. I'll divide them. We read this. To meet, that means measure. Out the valley of Shechem. Sarkov. Shechem, Sarkov. I'm going to put a measurement in Sarkov. And don't tell what God to me is getting everybody together. Everybody tried to get together in Genesis, and God said, Okay, we're going to build this tower, right? I need five. What happened? What happened when men tried to get to God? The God that guy asking for a five foot uh, lumber. Couldn't say five foot lumber that this other guy could hear him. God divided the tongue. All are welcome. You mean the unsaved world is welcome in your church? That's not Bible. Then again, your church may not be Bible. Ooh, that's a statement. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I will meet. I will measure out. Are you, are you to the measure? Are you to the measure? Are you to the measure? Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Look at God claiming that. That's God. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Now that was said in Genesis 49.10. The lawgiver was Moses. Here's my book. Moses came out of Levi. But who came out of Judah? Jesus Christ. Who fulfilled the law? Jesus Christ. Who did all counts of the law? Jesus Christ. Moab, they're an enemy of God, is my wash pot. Got dirty dishes? Come here, Moab. Got dirty underwear? Moab, come here. That's what it means. Over Edom, enemy of God. Will I cast out my shoe? John the Baptist says, I'm not even worthy to kneel down and tie the shoe of Jesus. God's like, Throw my shoe over him. Philistia, which is the Philistines, will I try it? I am going to get victory over the Philistines. Saul did it. David did it. That ain't David. David didn't get victory over him. Samson didn't get victory over him. Who will bring me into a strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Ooh, sounds like a path of somebody. I like a, maybe the, the root of Jesus Christ. Will not thou, O God? Who's going to pick up the nation Israel and bring them to King's Highway and bring them through the land? Joshua, yep, Joshua did, and Jesus. That's why Acts chapter 7 and why Hebrew says Jesus instead of Joshua. Ooh. And I know what you're talking about. I know, isn't it sorry? Isn't it sorry that you know more people on your uh, television episode program than you know the disciples of Jesus? Isn't it great that you know all the players of your team and yet you don't know the 12 tribes of Israel and the daughter of Jacob? That's so sad. And you'll stand before God one day. Well, not that oh, God's going to do it. Who's God? Who's going to do it? Jesus Christ. Revelation 19. Who has cast us off? God did. During the time of Jeremiah, Second Chronicles, God said, listen, I'll send you Jeremiah. Said, you don't want to listen? Fine. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, come here. Front and center. Go get him. 
Okay. You still won't listen to me? Keep preaching, Jeremiah. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar? Yes, sir. Come here. Yeah. Go get him again. Okay. <laughs> Keep preaching, Jeremiah. Oh, you're not going to listen? Nebuchadnezzar? Yes, sir. Go get him. Yes, sir. Oh, you want to crucify my son, Rome? Yeah. Titus? Yep. Go get him. You want to reject my, my saints that are preaching during the church age to you about Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah? Yeah. Antichrist? Yeah. Go get him. It's seven years. Yep. Seven years. End of the three and a half years of the tribulation. Yep. Yes, it is, God. Jesus? Yes, yes, Father. Go get him. Come on, church. Mount up. Da, 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 da. Go get him. A lot of go get -ems. God. And will not thou, O God, go forth with our host? Who's that host? The Christian. Arraigned in white, uh, white raiment. And white raiment is the righteousness of the saints. Ready? You think I'm full of it? Give us help from trouble. That's a famous word of David. I forget which prophet said, but it's called Jacob's trouble. For vain, nothing, of no value is the help of man, Psalms 107. Man ain't going to help you. Psalms 107. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. We've got the president. Yay! You better be careful because he may fall because of your love and devotion. You ought to be praying for his soul. Because I have never heard him testify of Jesus Christ. No, not his advisor, not this person in the chicken field, and this guy in, in the blueberry patch. I want the man to come out in front of the cameras, in front of everybody, say, I believe on Jesus Christ. Then you'll have me settled. Because I just, well, wait a minute, before YouTube Live, I believe in Jesus Christ. He is my Lord, God, and Savior. He saved my soul with his blood. I am going to heaven by Jesus Christ alone. See how simple it is? And I at least testify at least once a week on a Saturday morning before the public to say, Jesus Christ. Nothing. It's not hard at all. Man is not going to help you. Science is not going to help you. Education is not going to help you. And when the Jews are in the seventh year of the tribulation and the last three and a half years of the great tribulation, the man Antichrist is not going to help them when Jesus Christ tells his church, get on your horses, let's go. Da, 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 da. That's going to help the Jews. Now whether at Selah Preacher, wherever that place is prepared for God, by God, for those Jews, we're gonna, that's going to help the Jews. Because we're going to take them across like Moses did. We're going to go up the King's Highway. We're going to cross the Jordan River like Joshua did. And we're going to bring them in the land. And Jesus Christ is going to kick butt. I don't know if I can say that. We're going to kick butt. And all the enemies of the Jews are going to be stepped on. They're going to be slaughtered. They're going to be cast into hell with their blood upon the reins of Jesus. And here comes the Jews. And Jesus Christ is going to sit on the throne of David as David, the prince of Israel. Give us help from trouble. Psalm 108, 12. What's the trouble? David's been chased by a king Saul, a great type of Antichrist. The Jews are being chased by the Antichrist. Jacob's trouble. And what man's going to help him? The man Christ Jesus. Mary ain't going to do it because Mary's not a man. And the devil's got you to fool to think, oh, there's no male, there's no female. You better believe there is.
through God. Revelation 19 says that's Jesus, the word. King of kings, Lord of lords. I don't care what the Jehovah Witnesses say. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. And when Jesus mounts on that horse and comes back for the nation of Israel, that is God. That is God. We shall do valiantly. Ooh, those Jews, they're going to be on top of the world. They're going to be that one nation above all nations. The KKK won't be happy because they're against the Jewish people. The Catholic Church won't be happy because they're against the Jewish people. The United Nuts won't be happy because they're against the Jewish people. The Middle Easterns won't be happy because they're against the Jews. Russia ain't going to be happy because they're against the Jews. God is for the Jews. This psalm is written by David. David will be prince one day as Jesus Christ will be king of kings, lord of lords. And those Jewish people are going to do valiantly. They're going to be singing. They're going to be praising. They're going to be loving. They're going to be gladful. And the curse is going to be removed off the earth. And if you want to find me in a millennium, if, if God gives me an inheritance, if you want to find me in a millennium, you'll find me under a tomato bush. That's just going to keep producing tomatoes after tomatoes after tomatoes. With a salt pile and a pepper pile and an Italian dress. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know about Italian dress. <laughs> Maybe some Italian. The curse is removed. Israel is now standing with a new heart, with a new spirit by God. For he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Shall we read? Shall we check the Bible out? Shall we go to Revelation 19? Shall we? Okay. I'm glad you said so. I, I'm glad I got your opinion. We'll go to Revelation 19. We'll close here. Revelation 19. Verse 11. Who's going to triumph over the enemy of the Jew? I'll curse them that curse you, God told Abraham. Those will be the goat nation, Matthew. Depart from me. The sheep nations are the ones that help Jesus. Lord, when do we see you in prison? When do we take care of you when you're sick? When do we visit you when you're hungry? When you did it unto them, you did it unto me. He came unto his own. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F. And True, capital T. Didn't we just read about True in Psalm? And in righteousness he does judge. He imagines, I, I can always, I picture, this is so funny, I picture somebody walking up to Jesus. Judge not, these ye be judged. I can see Jesus looking at, you didn't finish the verse. For which judgment you judge, which men shall be meted out. I can see Jesus finishing that verse. <laughs> and make war. There's a war at the second advent. A war against God and the enemies of the Jew. And God wins. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew. When Jesus Christ comes at the second advent, they don't know the name of Jesus, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood of the enemies of the Jews. And his name is called the Word of God. John 1, 1 through 3 tells us who that is. That's Jesus. So the Jehovah Witnesses are wrong. 
And the armies which followed him followed him upon white horses, there's the church, clothed in fine linen. Look at verse 8 real quick. And to, and to her was granted that she should be reigned in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's us. I'm a saint. I don't care what no pope says. I don't care what no archbishop did. I don't care what no bird brain cardinal says. God says I'm a saint. He says, get up on a horse. Let's go. Joel chapter 2. And out of his mouth goes forth a sharp sword. Hebrews 4.12 says it's the word of God. And the armor of Jesus, uh, the armor of the Christian in Ephesians, I think it is, says you know, it's the word of God. That with it he should smite the nation, the enemy, the goats, but with, and shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he that trades the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. That does not sound he loves the sinner. That don't sound like it. The person that came and making all the prophets on, on God hates the sin and loves the sinner. That guy lied to you. I wish you stopped kicking. That's my job, kicker and a biter. I'm a junkyard dog for the King James Bible. The fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. He had his vesture. And on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that will be victory to the church and victory to the Jews.